the new $300 Meta Ray-Ban Smart Glasses. The latest smart glass product from Meta's production line and successor to the 2022's Ray-Ban Stories. Whilst Meta haven't reinvented the category of smart glasses, have they nailed the execution? Even if so, culturally, is the timing right for smart glasses or will this bomb like the Google Glass did in 2013? In this video, I'll be unboxing the glasses, giving you my first impressions of the design and key features, testing them in real life and letting you know if it's worth the investment of $300. Let's talk about initial impressions. My initial first impressions are actually the build quality and the design of these are really, really nice, I must say. They look and feel and weigh just like a normal pair of Ray-Ban glasses. Uh, of course, they're a little bit heavier uh, due to the tech inside, uh, weighing in at around 48 to 50 grams and I really like this colour which is uh, called the blue jeans and they've got this semi-translucent uh, plastic so you can actually kind of see what's going on inside. You can see the speakers and you can see a little bit uh, of the electronics as well. I really like the hinge quality, uh, they feel very sturdy. I would uh, be very confident in wearing these and not being too concerned about the quality. We also have the other uh, frame design. There are two frames, uh, the Wayfarer and the Headliner uh, with the transition lenses. Uh, this is obviously a slightly more rounded design and, and, and the Wayfarer more rectangular, more classic design. Which one do you prefer? Let us know in the comments. But yeah, initial first impressions are, I'm impressed, very good. Onto the case, the design language is exactly the same as traditional Ray-Bans, which is really nice to see. We have a USB-C charge at the bottom and also a uh, LED light indicator, which show us state of charge and also uh, the pairing. I really like the design of this. It's really nicely integrated. The way that these work is very similar to the AirPods in that the glasses are of course inside and you have battery in the glasses and then you also have a uh, battery inside. Uh, what I really like is they have the charge connector points inside so that obviously you can, as soon as you put the glasses inside uh, they, will, uh, they will charge up which is pretty cool. And of course uh, if you have your glasses you're going to take the case as well so you're never going to really forget it. So yeah, uh, really impressed with the way that the system works uh, with the glasses and the case itself. Looking at the specs, we have a reasonable 12 megapixel camera uh, module inside. Uh, so yeah, that's fairly standard now, I would say. Uh, video capture is at 1080p, 30 frames per second. So yeah, on a device as portable as this, um, that's, uh, that's quite impressive and uh, looking forward to see how that looks. Of course, with connectivity, we have Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, and uh, the weight of these coming in at around 48 grams. Uh, that might change a little bit depending on the type of frame that you have and the lens. Uh, now, let's um, talk about the storage because this is really one of the biggest improvements. We're coming in at 32 gigabytes. Uh, that's fixed every style that, uh, that we have. Um, so that's equivalent to about 500 photos and about uh, 130 second clips. So that's, that's pretty good because all of that goes uh, downloaded straight onto your phone. So I'm, I'm quite impressed with the increased storage. Now, finally, uh, the battery life, uh, the glasses will run for about four hours by themselves before having to put them back into the glasses case to charge. The glass case will charge another eight times. So you're getting around 32 hours in total for the glasses and the case together, which I think is really impressive. So far, it's looking really promising.
I also want to address the elephant in the room and touch on the main concerns that were raised regarding privacy. Understandably, people took the issue of being filmed or photographed without their consent. So Meta has tried to remedy the issue here by including an LED light on one side of the frame that lights up whenever the glasses are in use. While any attempts to block the light will actually switch off the streaming capabilities, Personally, I think it's an okay solution. I guess in the daylight, most people won't even notice, but of course you will see it at night. So it looks good, sounds promising, but is it worth buying? I tested the Ray-Ban Meta glasses out for the past week. To find out if it's an avoid, consider, shortlist, or just go ahead and buy. The glasses themselves work via Bluetooth. They connect to the Meta app, which will of course need to be downloaded beforehand. And this will send all of the videos and photos there. A simple click of the button located on the right arm and they'll take a photo. A long press will start recording the video and another click will stop. As soon as you take the video or photo, it shows that there's media found and ready to import. It takes about 25 seconds to import 10 photos and about 40 seconds for a 60 second video clip. The camera is 12 megapixels, which is impressive given its size. However, there is a slight delay between clicking and capturing the actual photo, making action shots a bit challenging and it's not instantaneous. Photo quality is high-end smartphone level, but photos may turn out blurry when you're in motion. The video recording is limited to 60 seconds, ending with a beep. This limit is for storage and possibly privacy reasons as well. This, however, is ideal for creating short form content for platforms like Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube, especially since all the photos and videos are vertical and there's no landscape options, unless you rotate your head by 90 degrees and then rotate the video post-production, but I do not recommend doing this as you're gonna look very weird. It's easy to capture some really nice moments of my dog or when I'm at a football match to capture the atmosphere. It's really pretty cool. I found it really easy to use and it was hands-free, which allowed me to fully enjoy the moment I was in without feeling awkward. This is even more discreet than pulling out your phone or using a GoPro. So it's definitely one of the best features that I really liked. What surprised me also was the voice controls. It's pretty basic, but will let you start and stop the video, take photos and send it to your contacts, as well as controlling and playing the music. It's making good use of the Snapdragon Gen 1 processor, even though it has limitations beyond basic voice commands. I wonder if the AI assistant will come later as a software upgrade via the app. I've tested the audio for calls in a few different environments for both personal and business whilst on the go. The audio both ways were really clear and crisp and I was pleasantly surprised by the quality. It's clear that Meta has paid a lot of attention to the audio quality here, placing five mics across the glasses, one of which is even located just under the nose pad. This of course passes over to when you're recording the videos as well, giving you a nice clear and crisp audio. The same goes for the speakers slotted in the frame above the ears on both sides. They deliver a surround sound experience and has a real depth and quality to them. Certainly better than previous open ear headphones that I have used in the past. When listening to music, you control the audio with a gesture control area on the right arm. The most basic controls are tapping once to pause and play audio and sliding forwards and back to control the volume up and down. Tapping twice will play the next track while tapping three times will let you go back a track as well. If you enable Spotify tap, then you can tap and hold to play an automatic recommendations based on your favorites, which is pretty cool. On the left arm, right in the hinge, there's also a small toggle switch that lets you cut the Bluetooth connection and power to the camera. Like other open-ear headphones, the speakers are not the best at reproducing deep bass, but as they are open-ear, you have a much better awareness of what's around you 
which is a lot safer. And I'd say this is a major bonus for using these types of glasses. Where they really shine is on Instagram and Facebook live stream. I tried a live stream on Instagram and the glasses icon pops up automatically on the screen. You can either tap the icon or double click the capture button to seamlessly switch views between your photo camera and the glass camera. When testing, I found this was very dependent on your Wi-Fi connection and I had the glasses telling me sometimes to remove other Bluetooth connections. So be aware that you'll always be limited by your phone or of course your Wi-Fi connection. So personally, I think it's best used for live streaming indoors where you know you have a strong and consistent Wi-Fi connection. The big issue here with live streaming on Meta glasses is of course you must use Instagram or Facebook. It's probably not a big deal, but imagine if you could live stream directly to TikTok, YouTube or Twitch. This would be an amazing USP. Meta quotes that their glasses have four hours of use or around eight charges, totaling 32 hours when used with the charging case. When fully charged, it's a bit better than the older model, which was about three hours. It always charges in the case via the USB-C and there's a really nice integrated indicator LED that turns blue when pairing, orange whilst it's charging, and of course green when it's fully charged. The case also has a quick charge capability. When testing, I found it went from 20% to 100% in less than an hour. I had these for about a week now, and aside from the initial charge, I haven't had to plug in the case for recharging at all, which considering you always will have the case and the glasses together, it's a great combination of a small battery in the glasses and of course the bigger battery in the case, which successfully achieves the right balance between form and function as a pair of glasses you can use every day. Using the glasses as headphones over an hour takes the battery down by about 20%. I doubt that you will use these as headphones all day at work. At most, maybe for a long run or a train journey or a car journey, where you'll get a good few hours of music. In summary, here are the things I really liked. There's definitely a noticeable improvement on the photo, the video and audio quality from the previous version. Also, what I really like is the Ray-Ban design language, and most would not notice any difference from normal Ray-Bans. Importing photos and videos is really quick and easy. I also love the charging case design. It's impressive and provides a really good user experience. Also, I can put my own prescription lenses, so actually I can use these in the office and on holiday. A neat thing is also the spatial audio. I notice when you watch the videos that you've recorded, you can hear where people are from where you recorded. Whilst I really like the glasses, there were obviously some areas of improvement. I think definitely the voice assistant is too slow to respond, especially comparing to what we're used to with Siri and Alexa. The delay in taking photos is really annoying. This has the biggest effect when taking action shots. The LED privacy indicator on the glasses, I think it's okay. Some might say it's still too inconspicuous. I don't know, what do you think? I also think that the 60 second limit on the video is mainly because of privacy control. I'm not sure, or am I being too cynical? Please let me know what you think. The device appeals definitely to gadget nerds and now to content creators. There's definitely this 007 secret agent feel to them because they look so normal. They set a new bar for what smart glasses can and should be able to do and look like. They are the same price as what you'd pay for a pair of Gucci's or Prada's, but of course these have multiple user cases. Really, it delivers on its promise of being the next generation of smart glasses. Are the Meta Smart Glasses a product you should avoid, consider, shortlist, or go ahead and buy? Well, I think you should definitely go ahead and buy these right now if you can get hold of them. I know the transition lenses of the Wayfarer frame are all sold out online in the UK. 
Of course, this is just my opinion. I would love to hear what you think, so please leave your comments below. In the next video, I'll be doing a tear down of the glasses and give you my expert opinion on the design for manufacture and more insights into the technology inside that enables the glasses to be so smart. So I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.